former Ukrainian president Petro Poroshenko has not had the best time since he lost the election to Volodymyr Zelensky. Ukraine's fifth president, who swept into power during the chaotic post-Euromaidan political landscape, has faced accusations of usurpation of power and corruption during his time holding Ukraine's highest office. And those accusations have followed him into his post-presidential life. But what exactly are the charges against Poroshenko, and have any of them stuck? Let's take a look at the charges arrayed against Ukraine's chocolate oligarch, one of the country's richest men and formerly the most powerful politician in the country. After failing to secure a second term for his presidency and a sharp defeat to Zelensky, he won only about 25% of the vote, Poroshenko, owner of one of the largest confectionery companies in Ukraine, was almost immediately faced with legal cases. 14, or possibly more at the last count. It's worth noting that in many of these cases, Poroshenko figures only as a witness and not a suspect. In May of 2019, in fact, the day after the inauguration of Vladimir Zelensky, the former deputy chief of staff for the administration of fugitive president Viktor Yanukovych, Andrei Portnov, returned to Ukraine after a five-year exile and immediately began accusing Poroshenko of enriching himself at the expense of the country and even of betraying it. While Portnov has made many accusations against Poroshenko, one charge in particular has stood out. That Poroshenko had usurped power by engineering a conflict between Ukrainian and Russian naval vessels in the Kerch Strait. The situation led to Poroshenko declaring martial law for a few months, though ultimately it was lifted with little to no impact on the election. Pornov didn't stop there, however. He also accused the former president of laundering $300 million and avoiding taxes on the sale of a factory that Poroshenko owned, which at the time was fulfilling an order for the Ukrainian armed forces. And, Portnov claims, Poroshenko remained the true owner of the factory despite its sale. In fact, Portnov has become one of the key figures in these accusations, and the State Bureau of Investigations has opened a number of cases based on Portnov's statements, such as an investigation into the possibly illegal appointment of a prime minister despite a lack of parliamentary coalition. But Portnov's accusations aren't the only things haunting Poroshenko. He was accused of helping a Kyiv judge who was facing corruption charges escape justice by fleeing to Moldova, according to an interview with Anton Shevtsov, a former top police official. Shevtsov claimed that Poroshenko's bodyguards personally escorted the judge through airport security, which triggered investigation by the SBI. Poroshenko is also under investigation by the SBI for possibly pressuring the court system, such as the High Council of Jurisprudence, which deals with the hiring and firing of judges. Here, Poroshenko is suspected of installing two judges to Ukraine's Supreme Court without going through the proper procedures. The chocolate oligarch has also made an enemy of former finance minister and former secretary of the National Security and Defense Council of Ukraine, Alexander Daniluk. Daniluk left the Poroshenko administration after a conflict with the prime minister at the time, though he returned after Zelensky's election, being appointed to the NSDC. There, he accused Poroshenko of removing servers containing classified materials from a situation room, though the servers were later found. And following an investigation by journalist from Radio Free Europe, Radio Liberty, Poroshenko also stands accused of illegally crossing the border and flying to the Maldives under faked or incorrect documents. The RFERL schemes program claims that Poroshenko and his family flew out under passports that did not feature their real names. And who can forget the leaked audio of a call between Poroshenko and probable U.S. presidential candidate Joe Biden, at the time vice president to U.S. President Barack Obama, which Zelensky has said should be thoroughly investigated. And that isn't even all of the legal cases against the former president. But among all of the open cases that feature Ukraine's fifth president, either as a suspect or as a witness, it's the latest two that may bring him the most consequences. The latest chapter in the Poroshenko saga starts with the SBI suspecting that Poroshenko had come into the possession of 43 paintings smuggled into the country illegally. They asked him to come in for questioning. But instead, Poroshenko arranged for a museum to display the pieces. His lawyers claimed that the subpoena issued in the case was invalid. This resulted in an absurd scene of investigators accosting the museum's director to gain entry, though Poroshenko and his entourage had already left. The museum's director claimed that the investigators lacked a warrant for the premises and refused to let them in. Ultimately, however, the paintings were confiscated. 
And those paintings led directly into the most serious, substantial charges the former president has been presented with so far, at least in terms of actual measures taken against him. The story goes like this. Poroshenko did ultimately visit the SBI office. Presumably, they issued him a subpoena his lawyers couldn't ignore. But once there, the story gets murkier. There are two sides of the story, the prosecutors and Poroshenko's, though only one of those is backed up by video evidence. Let's start with Poroshenko's side. He claims that when he arrived at the SBI office to provide a statement on the paintings, he was accosted by a prosecutor from the prosecutor general's office, who refused to identify themselves and attempted to serve Poroshenko with a notice of suspicion, a document attesting that an individual is a suspect in a criminal case in Ukrainian law. In this case, Poroshenko was being suspected not of smuggling the paintings, despite the fact that they're still owned by him, he's only a witness in that case but of exceeding his authority to issue a military official and a legal order. This, to translate into human language from legalese, is referring to the appointment of a man, Sergei Simochko, to the post of deputy head of Ukraine's foreign intelligence service. And it carries a possible sentence of 10 years in prison. According to the government, that position did not exist prior to Poroshenko's appointment of the man, and thus the appointment itself was illegal. Simochko isn't exactly a sympathetic figure either. Investigative journalists from Bikos.info revealed that he owned upwards of $8 million in real estate despite no possible way to finance that, and that his close relatives had Russian passports. Those journalists also allege that Poroshenko and Simochko had an agreement regarding Simochko's subsequent firing from the FIS. Simochko was fired by Poroshenko after the corruption came to light and Ukraine's National Anti-Corruption Bureau began investigations into the official, though this is where the alleged agreement plays in. Simochko claims he was fired while on sick leave, which is illegal under Ukrainian labor law, and Simochko is currently challenging his firing in court. The agreement, if there was one, probably had something to do with a legal trick. If Simochko successfully challenged the firing in court, he would by law be reinstated to his position and Poroshenko could then claim that there was nothing he could do to get rid of him. Securing the official's place in Ukraine's FIS, though as there's no hard evidence either way, that may just be speculation. Meanwhile, Poroshenko and his lawyers say that as the former president is an MP, the notice of suspicion must be handed over by the prosecutor general herself, Irina Venediktova formerly the head of the SBI and also a former MP in Zelensky's party, the Servant of the People. The SBI, however, alleged that Poroshenko was served with the notice, but that the former president and his lawyers began to fire back at the prosecutor, which resulted in Poroshenko storming out of the building. Their words are backed up with video footage uploaded to Facebook, though the video has been edited. Regardless of what Poroshenko's lawyers claim, the government clearly believes that proper procedure was followed. As a result, the case is going ahead, with prosecutors asking for Poroshenko's arrest and about $370,000 in bail. A hearing on the matter has been set for June 18, 2020, which, as of the recording of this video, is tomorrow, and Poroshenko has said that he will attend. A bail of $370,000 may only be an inconvenience to Poroshenko, as the magazine Forbes Ukraine places his fortune at $1.4 billion. As for the rest of the cases against Poroshenko, it seems reasonable to assume that they'll continue trudging on or play a role in the latest charges. Though former Prosecutor General Ruslan Rubashavka, highly respected by Western observers, said in an interview that the PGO under his tenure did not press them too highly as he believed they were mostly baseless or would hold up poorly in court. If the government's claims of Simochko's illegal appointment are true, however, then it will be an uphill battle for Poroshenko's lawyers to prove that everything was above board. The government may have finally found charges that will stick to Ukraine's first post-Euromaidan president, but large questions remain about the independence of the Prosecutor General's office, run by a former ruling party MP, about the validity of accusations by a former Yanukovych official, and about the political independence of Ukraine's courts themselves, something President Zelensky has made conflicting statements about. Western observers, including the European Union, have made it abundantly clear that they will be watching the case closely for signs of political interference, and many have already pointed out that previous charges seem quite transparently to be politically motivated. 
However, it's also worth noting that Ukraine's courts, notoriously corrupt, have yet to prosecute a single high-level official for corruption or malfeasance. So Poroshenko, still one of the richest men in a country where bribing judges happens unfortunately often, may believe that he ultimately has nothing to worry about. Nevertheless, the government's actions in this case will still carry a heavy impact and ultimately paint a very clear signal of whether Ukraine is truly dedicated to the values of rule of law or whether the current administration is going the path of previous ones and will use the law as a cudgel against its political opponents.